Hey, yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 Podcast, LLC. Please say the LLC. And before you listen to this episode, I just got to let you know, I need you to stop what you're doing. Go to blkrenaissance.com, and I need you to shop for the culture. That's right. Anytime you use the promo code LLC20 at Black Renaissance Clothing's website, you will get 20% off your order. Off rip. No questions asked. So do me a favor and do it for the culture. Peace. Hey, this is KJ, and I have a question for you. When was the last time you got something nice for yourself? <laughs> That's what I thought. So why not visit www.theblurredsyndicate.com and get something that will help you express who you really are. They've got shirts, mugs, purses, mouse pads, and even aprons for the grillers of the family. So if you're a fan of anime, pro wrestling, or hell, even the Golden Girls, the Blurred Syndicate has got you covered. Also, if you use the code LLC20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off your order. So what are you waiting on? I got mine. Come get yours. And remember to join the BS. Hi, guys. It's Mr. I'm Just Being Honest, host of the Truth Serum Podcast, podcast for the people. You can find me on Spotify, Anchor, and Buzzsprout. More networks coming soon. Happy listening. The self-destruct sequence has been activated. Repeat, the self-destruct sequence has been activated. This sequence may not be aborted. All employees proceed to the emergency car at the bottom platform. Mm-hmm. Okay, we lit it just like a fuse, so no need to pick and choose. Welcome to 2020, where we do more than interviews. The hottest beat coming through, dropping knowledge on all that you get. A beaker to front of you with the truth that they offer you. Yeah, hands up, we doing it for the culture. To give artists and businesses more exposure. Keeping it real and stay solid just like a boulder. It's about to go all the way down, can get no lower. Chasing my dreams, know that they get no slower. But if I stay running, I promise they're getting closer. More over success, my older. And if you're sleeping on me, I'm waking them up like boulders. I told you, coming from the land with the tide roll, well, we'll be on the whole. Different vibe though. We like to ride slow and keep our windows spinning so you really can see us like Stevie Wonder waking up with his eyes closed. Yeah, got the kind of flow that rocked the boat. On my 16s of pounds of dough. And if you figure you can hang with me on the mic, then grab some rope. Matter of fact, better grab some hope while you at it. We keep it live, it's time to tune in. Turn up the sound on what you're using. It goes so hard, I think it's bruising. The show is 2020, no need to zoom in. Yeah. Hey yo, what's up? It's your boy, sir, of the 2020 podcast LLC. Please say the LLC. And today I have a special guest, a couple of guests. Bolan Lay and Falami of You and I Rise. How are y'all doing today? Great. Thank you so much for asking. How are you? I am doing spectacular. It's always a pleasure uh, to run back into one of my, my friends from my college days, Falami. Like I said, you and I go back over 10 years. Mm-hmm. And when I did an open forum for anyone who may be interested in an interview, you immediately hit my inbox. And I was like, oh, got to take care of my girl first off rip. She, she got to get this. So uh, just wanted to give you guys your flowers first. Falami, I've always thought highly of you and respected you from my years in college. You may not have known, but you, you were an absolute instrument in one of the reasons that we would treat people the way we want to be treated. Because there was something about you that you carried yourself with the majesty that we had to reflect. So I just wanted to give that back to you right here, right now. Thank you. Wow. No I'm proud of what you've been doing here on your platform. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's what we're here about. So we're going to get on into this interview. You and I rise. So before we even get started, if someone was to ask what it is this organization was about, what would you guys say? Well, I would say that... <laughs> It, it's about what it's about is contained in the name. You and I rise is an acronym and it mm-hmm. stands for unappearances and intraracial insight, sensitivity, education. Ooh. Now, what is all that? <laughs> well, it begins with the U unappearances. It's a word that I actually made up, but it's made up from the root word apparent. So okay. apparent meaning evident, able to be seen and that kind of thing. And unapparent means not able to be seen, you know, 
And so uh, we put C's, C-I-E-S at the end to mean things or conditions that mm. are unapparent, that are not easily seen, that are hidden. Okay. And then intraracial. You've heard of interracial, like interracial dating mm. or, or that kind of thing that's between the races. Intraracial is within the race. Mm. So uh, then after that, we're talking about insight and sensitivity and education. So basically, it is to you and I rise exposes the things that are hidden that are not easily seen between us as black people and helps us to gain a more uh, uh, gain insight into our condition and adopt a more sensitive approach as we work together to provide what we need for ourselves. So when, when I'm speaking just regularly, I say that you and I rise as an adult education and training company that solves black American problems at school mm -hmm. work and in the community. Okay. No, I, I love that explanation because I think the best way to heal and connect with others are to look within and identify the common our ground between ourselves as a people. So I think that's really cool that you focus on that. That's, that's really nice. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. I, and I love this work. You know, it gives me the opportunity to be self-reflective all the time uh, and to be, and to share that with, with other people because it helps to, it, it helps to foster self-reflection and problem solving, you know, uh, self-reflection for the problem of sol problem solving and working together to do that. Okay. No, I, I love that. You're creating bridges by by defining that gray area and, and placing names on it, you know, helping people traverse that area. That's cool. Okay. I love how you put that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let me ask you this. How long have you guys been an organization? Okay. Well, you and I rise was formally uh, founded in 2011. But I started the work back uh, it, it, back in 2007 with the publishing of a really small, quick, easy reading uh, booklet for parents that um, describes the, it talks about the one thing that we can do that dramatically improves our effectiveness as parents, you know, makes life easier for the child, makes life easier for us as parents, it makes life easier for anybody who has to deal with our child. And that, uh, yeah, that's it. It's so brilliant. It's, <laughs> it's called Tapping Our Parental Power in a Nutshell. So you see it's thin. Nutshell, right? It's only yeah. about 23 pages of reading, you know. And so okay. inside of that 23 pages of reading, it includes all that, you know, that one thing that we can do that dramatically, you know, makes a dramatic difference in our in our lives and in our children's lives and that kind of thing. And I started doing book readings with parents. That was back in 2007. Mm. Started doing book readings with parents and the response was really overwhelmingly positive and it sparked a lot of discussion. And so uh, listening to the discussions, I started to create exercises from those questions and discussions. And then it formed a curriculum, a parent education curriculum that, uh, it has since grown to this tapping our parental power manual for creating academic and life success for our children. So okay. really it began, you know, you and I rise began with parent education and parenting at the intersection of parenting and education or what we think of as education, but really talking about schooling because education begins at home. Right. Right. And with that education, it trickles down to the children and so on and so on, fostering those relationships that we were talking about earlier. OK, I, I see where you're going with this. I, I like this. I like this. OK, it says, uh, it says children don't come with an instruction manual, but parenting should. Mm. <laughs> you know what what's, what's interesting about that is admittingly, you hear a lot of the more seasoned parents admitting that, you know, when we were younger parents, we were just, you know, flying by the the coats of our, you know, the straps of our boots, I believe the saying was, you know, just, just winging it as you could. But with that guidance, you know, in physical form, because 
don't get me wrong, passing things down, you know, verbally uh, is effective. But sometimes, mm -hmm. like myself, some people break it down easier when they have a physical representation of that wisdom, you know, in their hands. So Indeed. and not only that, sometimes people can't break down the intricacies, you know, in an understandable way that, you know, uh, just the English English language can. So I, I, I totally understand why putting it in that format is great. So kudos to you. That's that's brilliant. I, I like that someone actually made <laughs> a pamphlet on parenting. That's smart. That's smart. Indeed. Okay. And this is really and, and really it has black parents in mind, given our um, our experience in this country, you know, and the impact of our experience in this country, you know, the negative impact. And uh, uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time talking about our, well, no, let me go on to say it because because uh, as parents, we don't really realize, because first of all, let me broaden the, the, the scope to say that this society, the United States does not have a process, doesn't have a process that equips its people to be effective parents. You know, mm. like everybody, Everybody generally knows that you go to school, but there's, you know, so you know you generally need to know how to read. You know, you generally know how need to know how to drive a car if you want to drive one. Mm -hmm. You know, there are certain things that you have to go to school in order to be able to do. But parenting, as important as it is, there's not a standard process that people go through just to get basic parenting information so that they can be minimally effective parents, you know. And so that is a reality that this society doesn't have that process. Now, as it relates to black people in particular, our experience in this country, you know, we have a we have a multi-generational and trauma filled history in this country. And mm -hmm. so not having a process uh, adversely in in uh, adversely impacts us even more just because mm -hmm. of the natural responses to trauma that are not necessarily healthy being passed down from generation to generation. You know, we don't realize that, you know, when we think about it, our parent, we're raised by people who were raised by traumatized people who were raised by traumatized people. And mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that something that the people were bad. It just means that, they didn't have the information, tools, and resources to be able to provide and protect environments for our children to be for their children to be able to to thrive and to to take advantage of the opportunities that life has. You know, when you think about it like that, then it hopefully helps us as black parents to be more willing to look. Mm -hmm. You know, willing to look at something like tapping our parental power. Okay. No, uh, I, I think that, like we said earlier, it opens up that conversation that needs to happen. A lot of times with the changing of leadership between generations, we can sometimes get stagnant in the, well, the generations before me did it this way. Well, they did it that way out of necessity. Right. You know, things have changed. Communities have changed. More um, venues and and ways of treating each other are available now. So we have to condition ourselves to be open to accepting a different format of, and, of raising ourselves and our kids. So I'm I'm fully understanding this. So I like I, I like the way. And 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 I mean this in the most respectful way to hear that coming from the generation before me. Yes. Pushing that makes me feel like I'm on the right path of having an open mind. So You're right. yes, you are. <laughs> you absolutely are. Because being willing to look is the 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 first thing that's necessary. You mm. know, willingness, willingness to look. You know, if there's unwillingness then there's no need to go any farther, you know. So uh so yeah, you're definitely on the right track. All right. So let's talk about you mentioned that, you know, started in in 2011 and up to now. That's over 10 years. 
That's of right. building and branching, mm -hmm. networking. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd like to show those who dare to follow a dream that there are going to be obstacles when you're trying to build. <laughs> <laughs> what were some of the obstacles that you encountered along with this idea and pursuing it? Well, there are two main obstacles that I'd like to point out. Number one is that when, you, when you're creating something, you don't always know what you need. And so you're creating what you believe is needed you know you're 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 working to fulfill the vision that you have and so it won't happen until you do it but once mm -hmm. you get to working on it then you find that oh i need this thing oh i need mm -hmm. that you know oh i need this and some things you know basically what i'm saying is you're going to pay a lot you're going to pay a lot <laughs> for <Yeah. laughs> for your learning you know you cuz it's really about your learning Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're going to pay a lot to bring this vision to fruition. And then the second thing, I mean, and, and it's a, and it's, when you think about it, it's actually a small price to pay for your vision, you know, because your vision generally when it's, when it's, um, we know that when it's spirit led and we know it's a, around your purpose because it benefits others. Right. Okay. And so, when you think about that, because it's for the purpose of benefiting others, whatever you pay for it is just going to be a drop in the bucket. Okay. It may not be a drop in the bucket to you, <laughs> <laughs> but, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a drop in the bucket, but you're going to pay for it. Okay. It's not going to come easy, especially if it's something that, that is not already there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the second obstacle is yourself you know yourself me i am the biggest obstacle to my business mm. i am without a doubt okay and and that's because of my habits my attitudes my limiting beliefs my you know the, uh the decisions that i make on a day-to-day -day basis are either going to help open the way or they're going to delay. Mm. <laughs> that needs to be a t-shirt. <laughs> right. I mean, because of course we're hurt with the business, but you know, I, I said it all the time about me and you know the things I would like to do as well. So that's just if everybody could realize that like, you really are your own opposite. Like you're, you're so right. Gigantic. Yeah, you know, you have all the work you can handle just dealing, you know, controlling this right here. Control mm -hmm. it, you know, get get to know it, control it, you know, mm -hmm. um, um, make, and make you your friend, you know, make yourself your friend. You know, you, mm -hmm. you're going to have all of those different things. You're going to have your weaknesses. You're going to have your strengths. You're going to have your challenges. You're going to have your victories. You're going to have your... You know, all all of the things that a person has, we're going to have them. And so uh, be, our, be, be your own friend, you know, treat yourself like you treat your friend, encouraging mm. and that kind of thing. We do a lot of, you know, sometimes we are our worst critic, you know, but if we remember why we're doing what we're doing mm. and talk to ourselves like we talk to our best friend, like we're talking to your, your best friend. You know, we wouldn't be so negative talking to our best friend about the mistakes that they make and, you know, things of that nature. So, right. so yeah. So, yeah. I'm, I'm my biggest obstacle and everyone is their own biggest obstacle when it comes to bringing, bringing their vision and their purpose and their passion to light. You know, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I was faced with a decision I had to make involving uh, the financial drop in the bucket where <laughs> anytime you have to make a decision over a certain amount as an adult, you have to kind of, okay, wait a minute now. You know, you got to scale back. Yeah. But I had the experience of 
having to convince myself it was okay to use this to pursue my dream, mm -hmm. you know, and I found out that is due to trauma. Didn't even know that until recently that I had those feelings. So I appreciate that not only are you encouraging others to in this interview to get out of your way, but finding out the root of the, some of those doubts aren't just because of you. They have to do with where you've come from. Indeed. Indeed. You know? You know, and, and, and one thing that I did, because if anything, I probably was on the opposite side of that. I would, you know, quickly invest in things that I believed would help grow the business. But sometimes I wasn't at that level to take really take advantage of some of those things. And so mm. that's a, a part of, you know, uh, your learning. You know, sometimes we would think, oh, goodness, I just wasted all that money. Well, I I. I had a nice lesson there, you know, <laughs> and so, and so, uh, I, I put a measure in place now in the form of my friend, Angela, who's a, an accountant. If I can't justify this expense to her, mm. then I won't do it. Mm. But, I, <laughs> but I had, it took me a while to groom her to help me to do this, you know, because she's like, you're in business, you do that. No, I need some help. <laughs> no, I need, you know, but we're talking about something. She's very, very, you know, uh, uh, down to earth and practical about it. Like, okay, no. Nah. And she's really disciplined financially. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you know, like it sounds like you, it's hard for you. It's hard for you to make a large purchase or make a, you know, investment. So you may need that other person on the side that, you know, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, ma'am. 100%. The other side of that. I needed the one mm -hmm. to bring me in. You may need the one to push you forward, yep. you know, that kind of thing. 100%. To know 100%. what we need, you know, right? because we right. can't be everything that we need. That you you, you speaking you spitting facts right now spitting <laughs> facts right now all right so we we've we've talked about the obstacles let's shift the the conversation to more of a personal sense because when we hear things about entrepreneurship we get to see the work side of it but we don't get to hear about the attempts to balance your personal life with the business entrepreneurial side so how do you manage to pursue that balance? Or how are you uh, doing in your pursuit of that work-life balance? Well, I can say that it's a lot easier for me now because mm -hmm. my children are grown. They're grown and gone, you know. So, um, and, you know, when they come back, they're coming back and they're still grown and gone. I'm not having to do I don't have the responsibilities of day-to-day -day parenting. So mm. that's, uh, it wasn't always like that. Like uh, when I wrote the book in 2007, I was actively parenting and I stopped uh, my, my last ones relieved me of the responsibility somewhere around 2013 or 2014. Okay. So that's how long I've been empty nesting. But right. uh, so that has, allowed a lot of flexibility and um so uh I'm, I'm aware that i'm older than probably your listening audience so they are dealing with uh families and and that kind of thing so i'm gonna let falami jump in here about that uh, how you how do you do well um as far as juggling personal life and entrepreneurship it's um well work, working with you and i rise is nice because it's it is a flexible type of a schedule and uh, my mother did that on purpose because of her uh wanting to do entrepreneurial pursuits and and work on behalf of our people and also be a an attentive parent and you know that's true i forgot person. to say that right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that's exactly. true yeah so she she designed her business in the way that where she can employ you know in particular single parents because that way they can earn a substantial income and at the same time you know be present as a parent mm -hmm. 
which is extremely important. You know, a lot of times, and she says, in, you know, in her book, a lot of times, I'm sorry, a lot of times <laughs> we we put the priority above parenting, the priority of our job, the priority mm -hmm. of you know school and everything else. And um, but but yeah, the way the way you um, the way I balance it, I don't the the my issue is I I, I lean more on the personal side, I guess I probably, I need to figure out how to incorporate more of the working part, you know, because I don't have mm -hmm. a, a problem balancing work and life. <laughs> but the, and it's, I'm, I'm happy you said everything that you said, because it allows me to think about how I came to make that decision. And it came mm -hmm. down to um, this, a lot of the information that I share in the Tapping Our Parental Power Workshop um the the foundational thinking of the exercises and that kind of thing they come from um my experience because uh i took a course back when falami was about four years old i took a course that uh, um that was facilitated by the founders of an african-centered school so mm. I, it was a, a like a 13 or 14 week course. We met Friday evenings and it explained African centered education, what it is, what it is, and, and how parents can support their children in an African centered educational environment. That was the, the parents had to complete that before, um, not before they enrolled their children, but it was a condition of enrolling their children. They, mm -hmm. they enrolled their children at this independent school. Their parents had to go through this course. So they understood what they were enrolling into. And so me having that foundation of information about my responsibility as a parent and how it and how African-centered education, the definition of it and what we need to be about as black people, it helped me to decide what was most important. It helped me to prioritize um, my role as a parent and make that and make income earning, um, I was gonna say secondary, but it wasn't secondary. It had to encompass or it, it had to overlap or you know, they, it had to respect the fact that I was a parent. My income earning mm -hmm. had to respect that, you know. And so I, that was a situation that, is, that I was able to create for myself to be a independent contractor as opposed to an employee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, that's a good explanation. Uh, so... Because the reason I enjoy that question, because that's one of those questions that nobody's, and I mean, absolutely nobody's responses are the same. Yes. Um, a, a lot of that question tends to show, you know, where we are in our journey, whether it be in the beginning or in the middle, or if we've completed a goal. Um, mm -hmm. the, the point of it is majority of the people I've spoken with, with that question, have yet to absolutely perfect that balance. Reason being right. is we are constantly pursuing the next goal. Mm -hmm. So things change. Life life is shifting. It's like a boat in the water. You know, it's never just smooth sailing all the time. So you have to be open to change, open to adjustments. But it seems with your plan, you foresaw that. So you wanted that flexibility to start from. So I think that's really good that you got off on that foot to start with before you even you know, got everything rolling. That's great. Well, yes, I had to, uh, uh, you know, once, once you learn information, once you learn uh, uh, information about your responsibility as a parent, you know, mm -hmm. it's hard to ignore it <laughs> when you're faced with challenges. You know, you can't, you can't really let that particular responsibility go. You can't, you know, kind of turn your eye once you know, like, for example, parents overarching responsibility to children. Um, if I'm convinced that if black parents just knew this across the board, it would change the way that we approach parenting. And that mm -hmm. is uh, 
And tell me if you've ever heard this, a parent's overarching responsibility to children, to their children is to help their children to discover their purpose. Yes, I have. Wonderful, wonderful. There's a lot of parents who have not heard that. And when parents hear it, it may, you know, like, wow. And the first thing that they say is, well, I don't know my purpose. Mm. You know, and it's mm. understandable that we don't know our purpose, especially in this country, given our history. Right. Yep. Right. Okay. All right. But then uh, uh, that doesn't mean that we can't discover our purpose. It's just that now we're because we're parents and we have the responsibility of helping our children to discover their purpose, then a lot of the time it's my personal belief and I believe it to my bones that we will discover our purpose as we expose our children to experiences that help them to discover theirs. Ooh. That makes sense? It does. It does. Mm -hmm. It does. We encourage them to find their way. And in that sense, we will find our purpose in that as well. And I love it. I love it. Okay. So you mentioned earlier that you know, with some of the events you've attended and 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 done and received feedback from, was some of the uh, the sessions where you did readings, you know, read-alongs with some of the parents that were uh, involved in uh, your organization. So, I wanted to ask: over the last ten plus years, has there been one defining event or interaction or I guess just any moment that kind of solidified and confirmed that you were on that path that you wanted. Just that one memory where you were like, you know what? This is why I do this. This right here is why. When um, the first time I actually held a workshop, when I had compiled a few exercises mm -hmm. and I asked some parents to please attend. And the first time I did it, um, um, it was maybe, I can't remember how many weeks it was, but it was maybe two or three weeks or something like that, met once a week. And mm -hmm. I had uh, my, I befriended a videographer. And he was like, well, let me come up and record some testimonials. And I was like, thank you. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yes. And when he recorded those testimonials, I was <laughs> because I didn't ask them, to, you know, I just, I asked them to record the testimonial, but the things that they said was just, it was exactly why I, I did it, you know, because parents were saying things like, well, you know, it made me think more about me being a person in, a, in addition to being a, a parent, you know, it made me more aware of myself and what I am bringing to my children, you know, and and it made me aware of something like I may be wanting to spend more quality time with my children, but I had to ask myself, I went through questions that have me to evaluate whether or not I was actually doing this thing that I said I wanted to do, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. You know, he one of said, you know, had me. I went home and I caused positive interaction between, mm -hmm. you know, me and my children. You know, if I wasn't, if I wasn't yelling at them, I wasn't talking to them. But now I'm, you know, my parents said, you know, I used to yell and cuss at my children. I would yell and cuss, and now, wow, I take I take it back. <laughs> you, know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and one one father he didn't he hardly said anything. But he said, if a lot of parents took this class, there'd be a whole lot less violence. And I was like, <laughs> that's powerful. Yes, yes. I that, you know, hearing people talk about their experience with the courses, it, and it happens every time I do it. I'm I'm always confirmed that yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the first time was back in, I wanna say. 2012 maybe uh, oh, okay. when when we had that first recorded parent testimonial mm. that was that was the defining moment 
and I feel that every time I, every time I complete a workshop or every time, you know, something like whenever there's a group of parents and we're giving, they're giving their feedback. Because like, no, right. mm-hmm. we, uh, we do a parent orientation at a local uh, African center school as part of the St. Louis public school district. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, every time they're, I love this one lady who's like, I feel drove. She has eight children. She's just like, you know, everybody that takes it, just, it's, this is a two hour course. This is not even a big workshop she was talking about. Oh, man. Two hour series wow. of videos. And overwhelmingly, the parents are, first of all, they say every parent needs to see it. And they say, I didn't know this information. You know, my parents didn't teach me why, of course, because their parents didn't know it. Right. And it's just basic parenting stuff. You know, it doesn't even go into. Like I said, this two-hour presentation doesn't even go into this, you know, the full fifteen right. hour. <laughs> yeah, the full but it's 15. very impactful mm-hmm. in every all of them. Everybody needs to see this. I love it. I mean, that one woman. This is wild. I feel drove. You know, this. Is how <laughs> 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 like, how come nobody tell you know? And one time there was a a parent parent because this is a school orientation. The the mm-hmm. parent, a grandparent, and the parent were both present in the orientation Ooh. and the grandparent apologized to them. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. right right there and right exactly right there. Ooh, like, man she made some mistakes with you and yeah sure oh that's yeah. powerful yeah. it is isn't it man Ooh. just just imagine the conversations and and don't get me wrong the ones amongst you are phenomenal to hear but imagine just thinking about on the way home That's or right. when it's just them in the room just some of the the clarity that you may not have gotten for 20 plus years you may oh man Ooh. yeah because they come I, back I, and they tell us they're like i've been telling everybody about this. Like, I, I gotta, I gotta see this, you know like, i've been telling everybody about y'all's presentation and stuff so yeah. that's amazing that's amazing. And 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 I'm kind of excited because that leads to my next question, because one of the things about doing these interviews is I get to ask the question about your future plans. Mm. You know, it's good to see, you know, where you guys have come from. But with this question, I'm going to ask you about your future. So where would you guys like to see yourselves as people? Let me make that a point as people in the next one year three years and in 10 years and also where would you like to see you and i rise in one year three years and 10 years okay myself (laughs) 56 i'll be 56 in a year so where will i be uh i'm pretty sure i'll still be in this house um uh a lot of my when I think about what I'd be doing, it, it's attached to the business because because that's how I think about it. Like, huh, where would we be? But uh, let me let me stay personal because when I think about it, myself in this house, uh, uh, the interactions with my family that's what that's mm. what I'm thinking about. You know, because I have a lot of family in this house. You know, and. Uh, and I expect more family in this house. So uh, it would be family oriented activities more or even, you know, continuing and more and growing mm-hmm. our family uh, work, working together, you know, because we do have some goals as a family that we're setting in working to meet and that kind of thing that's one of the uh one of the things that i'm most proud of as a as a mother that uh my children and i we still we 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 talk closely enough to set family goals and and that kind of thing and so we're working toward fulfilling them and so yeah yeah so that's that's really all of them. One, three, and and you said one, three, five, and ten. No, one, no, one three, and one, ten. Three and ten. One, three, and ten. Uh, yeah, it would be building on those things because those are the things that I've already 
I've always been involved in, you know, family goals, um, be they individual goals like, uh, you know, achieving financial stability to be able to do things like buy property and, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, making sure that we have the things that we need, you know, kind of stuff. Um, and working together to do that, working together is really, it's an important value for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, it's easy for me to talk specifically about you and I rise and the goals that I have for you and I rise, you know, okay. in a year, Let's you go. know, we're going to need at least uh, five uh, active contracts with school districts you know, with this particular program that Falami was talking about, the school orientation kind of thing, because I don't know if you know, but nationally, more than half of Black children are failing in school because they read below their grade level. And Mm -hmm. in uh, metropolitan areas where there's a sizable Black population, like here in St. Louis, in, in St. Louis public schools, uh, I think across the district, I want to say 75% of Black children read below the grade level. There are some s- schools where 90% of the children in, who are enrolled read below the grade level. And so that's a community problem. And mm. so we've set goals around helping to solve that problem. And our contribution to that goal is to get adults on the same page because that's an adult problem. It's a community problem. It's not a child problem. Children are the ones, you know, we're the ones we're looking at our children. We're looking at the progress of our children and we see that that's a problem, but that's not their problem. It's our problem because we have not created and protected environments that allow our children to thrive. And it doesn't just show up in school. That's just a place where we can see it, you know? Okay. So, so that's an easy day to point to be able to point to. And that's why we, our work mainly up to this point has been with schools, you know, because schools are the ones who are feeling the impact and being blamed for what's really a societal and a community shortcoming. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're measuring that in contracts. We want five contracts in a year. We want, you know, like 20 contracts in three years. You know that kind of thing. So that's a that's a numbers thing. And the other the other goal with you and I rise is wrapped up in what Falami already said about employing parents, employing mm-hmm. parents, single parents in particular, but basically so that we can have full t- uh, part time work for full time pay. So the parents can focus on the main task of being present to raise children. Because to you know, we we take our children and we 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 funnel them off to whoever is providing some type of supervision while we go and work. And that that's not really working right now. That's not working. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't it doesn't allow us to strengthen our relationships with our children. It doesn't allow us to um, to learn them and have them learn us and us, you know, learn how to work together and grow together and that kind of thing. Mm. You know, this society is becoming increasingly child unfriendly. I don't know if you noticed that, but, you know, yes. it's, you know, comedians and, you know, li- listening to shows, you know, it's like, oh, these kids, oh, I hate kids. I hate getting fuck these kids, you know, mm. I don't like, oh, babies, oh, I don't like them, you know, that kind of thing. There's a lot of that going around. It's a lot of that. And what is the impact of that? You know, we're not talking mm-hmm. about the, I can talk forever about this thing right here and shoot the rise in pedophilia, the rise in, you know, uh, human trafficking. That's the yes. new, uh, new word for slavery now. This new mm-hmm. word for, for all of that. But yeah, yeah. And all of this is ain't dead children. That's but that's uh, but that's stuff that adults are doing. Right. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, um, me myself personally, um, 
one year, in one year i would like to have a screenplay completed uh my first feature film screenplay i would like to have that complete i would like to also be on the path i mean that would put me on the path um well in a year i would like to have made good gains in my I don't want I'm not trying to be a bodybuilder. I say I, I like to build my body. So I just joined the CrossFit gym. So yeah, I, I would like to have a consistency within this next coming year in working out. Because I work out for maybe a couple months at a time. I fall off a few. I would love to be consistent. Woo! Okay. And, you know, <laughs> one, we like it. and you know, so yeah. I wish I could say that. I would love to be consistent. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> I like African dance, but mm-hmm. with you. working out, no. Okay, but go ahead. Go well, yeah, well, and, and then what trips me up is the eating part. Because I, I can go to the mm. day, but I just need to make sure I do my meals and eat my meals. So that's, ooh, that'd be wonderful. I don't miss any meals. <laughs> Look, I would. <laughs> well, you, I'm on the same page. I hear you. But yeah, I, I hear you for a lot of me. Like, uh, as, as easy as I thought meal prepping would be, it's fun to do, but keeping it up is a little difficult. You have to set aside time. So I hear you. I hear you. One million percent. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and in three years, you know, uh, whew, yeah, in three years, I would like to have. Um, I would like to be first. <laughs> I need to say something tangible. Yeah, you know, I'm not a planner. So that's the one thing I need to work on. But yeah, I mean, I need to definitely have something in the works going toward my um, my media mogul desires. You know what I mean? So yeah, like maybe having made the dog on feature film. <laughs> you know, the three years when I'm, or starting to make it or something. Do you so, want to be yeah. in LA still? Oh uh, well, I do want to see. That's a, I know I wanted to be in LA in three years okay. for sure. But um, with that, because the reason I'm in St. Louis again is because my baby girl. So it's it's like I've been reading Charlemagne's book, um, Charlemagne the God's book, Black Privilege, and he was yes. like, yeah, he was like, yo. Yeah. Everybody wants Finish that one and shook ones. Yeah, you, yeah, it's a great book. Great book. Oh yeah, I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And he's like, everybody wants to be in LA and New York, and mm-hmm. you know they think they gotta be somewhere else. But he's like, yo, do what you're gonna do where you are, you know. And Mark's that's gonna build the you know. So I'm always like, hear that. So I'm not so much focused on LA now. I'm just gonna be okay. like, okay, let me do. You know, if I want to do some stand up, but I can be doing stand up around here. I could be, doing, you know, and I can work on any kind of filming desires around here, you know, and that's gonna. Put me wherever I need to be. It, yeah. I'm need money to go to LA. I'm need money to, <laughs> to dual live in LA and St. Louis. So we'll let that work out how that is. So I'm just focused on doing my craft or whatever I would like to do. So and in 10 years, in 10 years, your girl is definitely gonna I w- would like to have a television show based on my life in 10 years. So I'm just gonna timestamp the date so I can okay. save this so I can play this in the future. Okay. But, uh, yeah you go get it <laughs> go get it man and so when you got your tv show and i come back around I'm like yo i need another interview about your tv show i just you know what i'm saying just remember me that's all i ask oh jeremy come on man <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. you need to say we got you <laughs> right got you. okay well I, I i love to hear these things uh and Honestly, it's my second favorite question because I'm I'm a firm believer that if you you say something, you write it down, that makes it real. All you have to do at that point is just put the the effort in it. One foot after the other, one foot after the other, and you will get there. So I love to hear other people's dreams. So to both of you, I, I, I hope to hear in a year's time that you guys are are way closer than you think you are. Mm-hmm. So we will definitely be checking in about those dreams and those goals. I, I'm one of them friends that like to, to hold people accountable because right? mm-hmm. I, I like the same. You know what I'm saying? So indeed. Well, indeed. Gonna, well, how about yours? Tell us yours. Oh, mine. One, three, and ten. Okay. You know what? No one has ever asked me that. Okay. So <laughs> in one year, uh, I would like to have 
my second documentary completed, at least filming. Uh, I've actually filmed my first documentary on the history of Mardi Gras um, mm. that is going to release uh, this carnival season, which will be in February. Um, in three years, I hope to have fully expanded on my podcast network. Uh, I currently have two other podcasts beside mine underneath my brand. I hope to have maybe six, six to seven uh, with a location, uh, with the office space where we can come and create content. And then 10, I just want to be behind the scenes. That's it. I just, I don't want to have to be on camera if I don't want to. I would love to be strictly a producer slash editor because that is, that's where my heart is. Right. All right. Oh, yeah. That's exciting. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I'll be checking in with you then. Hold no, you. I, I will. Yes, Please we do. Have this, we have this time stamp here. All right. All right. You heard it here first. <laughs> All right. So this is my final question. And uh before I, I ask it, I just want to say again, thank you guys for taking time out of your day to do this interview because I'm sure the people listening will have drawn some inspiration and some confirmation from both of you. So again, thank you both. Thank so, you. No problem. No problem. So the hardest thing in the world to do is to take an idea and run with it. It's also the scariest. What words of encouragement do you guys have for that person who has a dream, they have an idea, they, they, they have an inkling of what they feel their purpose is, but they're afraid to pursue it. What would you tell that person? Um, if it's aligned with your purpose, I found that you, you, if you don't do it, you, I can't think of another way to say it except you'll, you'll go crazy if you don't. Mm. You know, and so you might as well go on and start. <laughs> you might as well go on and start and stick with it and that kind of thing. Because if you don't, you're going to be in in a crazy headspace trying to do things that you know you you won't be as productive. You won't be productive. You won't feel fulfilled unless you are actually doing the thing that brings you you know that fulfills your passion that that uh deals with your purpose you know if you already have that inkling of what you're supposed to be doing until you do it you're going to be crazy mm. you know and, and and i know that but because of with my own self i i uh, avoided i i procrastinated that's the word i procrastinated mm. writing the book you know, and it was, I kept hearing, I'm talking about writing this little book. I procrastinated writing it. And I kept saying, it was in the back of my mind, like, yeah, I'm going to write that book. Yeah, I know what it is. Yeah, I know, no, 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 no. I know the general outline. Yeah, I know. And I kept hearing things and seeing things about parents abusing their children and mm. stuff like that. It was just, it, it just kept coming and it would come and, and it more the more it came i just i remember waking up in the middle of the night okay <laughs> <laughs> it was like that you know because if i if you don't do it it's going to drive you crazy that's mm. the only way i can put it mm. um and yes with me I mean, I, I, I can attest to what she's saying as well, because I was in corporate America, you know, I'm learning, I'm earning this great income, yet I'm like, still going mm. crazy, I'm like, <laughs> what am I doing here? I don't, you know, this is not fulfilling, this is not like my purpose, you know, I know people think, oh, she's so cloud the sky, you know, like, I know I need to make money, okay, but until, you know, and I'm sitting up here, over you know another state doing things like my mom was doing as far as social scientist team type social scientist type things mm. it's like you know and I'm, I'm being analytical and i'm and i'm looking at problems and i'm you know trying to figure out how to solve them and 
you know, mama keeps saying, why don't you come work with me? You know, and I'm like, oh, but I have to make money. You can't pay me. <laughs> and so, um, but until I came, you know, I've only been employed with you and I rise for a couple months now, right? Mama? That's right. And so, but when I did come over, you know, I'm like, oh, you know, life circumstances has made it to where this was the right timing. You know? mm. And I do feel fulfilled. And, and, and like they say, um, they say, um, do what you love or do what's in line with your purpose because then you actually won't feel like working, you know, or do what you would do for free, you know. And mm. that's, and I do, you know, I'm like, I would do this for free, you know. Um, and this is just and what I, I have, have do. done it for free. All right. <laughs> 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 Why? Because it's just that necessary. Because you have that much of a passion for it. Because it is, like you said, beneficial for other people. And so that's the thing. It's like, what is in line with your purpose? Like she said earlier, is very beneficial to other people. So right. that's the encouragement. There, it's like, do it. Why? Because if you don't, it, you'll get driven crazy. And also. It's just like think about all other people is going to impact and benefit, right? Because it's not for you, because you are here for a reason, and mm. that reason is important. It is needed. It's like everybody is a piece of the puzzle. You know, we all make up together. We make up this beautiful puzzle, and everybody contributes an important piece of it. Mm -hmm. And if you don't contribute your piece, then the puzzle is incomplete. And we can't get the full picture. You know, everybody's bringing an important perspective, an important idea, you know, important aspect that that the rest of us need in order to to be our best. You know, where who is it like who is somebody's like? Well, who are you? Who are you to cheat the, the rest of us? You're cheating the rest of us. Uh. You know? That's a good way to put it. I, I never really thought about it that way because your blessing may be something meant for me as well. Mm -hmm. mm. You could be cheating the world. I, I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Little mind blown a little bit there. That's a good way to put it. All right. Well, ladies, uh, if anyone wanted to uh, get in contact with you guys about you and I rise, uh, whether it be about, you know, getting further information or it, maybe if they just wanted to get some, give you guys some support or get some support from you, mm -hmm. what's the best way to get in contact with you guys? Well, the best way would be through email. And my email is bolanle at uandirise.com. I'll spell it. Mm -hmm. Bolanle, B-O-L-A-N-L-E at letter U. A N D letter I R I S E dot com. So and to spell out you and I rise dot com. Falami right. at you and I rise dot com and Falami is Falami at you and I rise dot com. There it is. I'm gonna make sure that we have uh, both of those, whether a visual description there or in the comment section below. Uh, mm -hmm. We will make sure that those are there. So. People who have been touched by this can definitely respond back to you guys. That's right. And, and if you want to go to the website, yeah, the website itself is uandirise.com. U-A-N-D-I-R-I-S-E.com. It, uh, it gives you an overview of the our three main programs. The first one, we talked a little bit about tapping our parental power. We also talked a little bit about Healthy School Home Connection. That's the one that's marketed to schools. And Healthy School Home Connection is actually a pullout of tapping our parental power. It's a small piece of tapping our parental power, but that's marketed to schools. And then there is a different training that we didn't talk about, but it has the same name as the business, You and I Rise. And that is for businesses, for uh, institutions and organizations with mainly black, the, who serve mainly black people, have mainly black employees, or mainly black members. And the purpose of that is to uh, remove, again, the unappearances that mm -hmm. keep us from being able to be as productive as we can in the work environment. 
Yeah, I don't know if you've heard it said. I'm sure people talk about it all the time. Ooh, it is something working with black people. Ooh. Well, you know what? Ooh, working for black people is something else. And there's truth uh-huh. to it. I'm, I'm I'm guilty of saying it. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm guilty of saying it. I've done it. I've done it's it. true. There's truth to it. And so what we do is we we have a training that helps us to explain why that is and what we can do about it because we still have to work together to meet our challenges and solve our problems. Mm. I, I love how throughout this interview, community connection. And, and change for the better has been the overall theme of this. So mm-hmm. I love it. I love to see it. Thank you both again for this. This this has kind of put a little bit more pep in my step today. So <laughs> I can only imagine what it's going to do for our listeners and viewers. Uh, was there anything else you guys wanted to announce or, or touch on? Um, well, I can speak about Black Parents on Top. Dot com. That okay. is uh, um, that there we offer and, and it's growing because it's a new, but we have a, a couple of free things coming up there. This is for black specifically for black parents. Uh, there's a, a PDF that is downloadable. It's a free PDF called five ways we teach our children to fail. Mm. And again, that's about dealing with the, you know, our children uh, failing in school, reading below their grade level. And then there's another free webinar. There's a free webinar that we're going to be offering in a few weeks called uh, Sex, Not My Baby. It's a way to for us to approach the subject of sex education with our children, you know, regardless of the age, regardless Mm. of our children's age. You know, that's a that's a, a a topic that as parents, we often avoid. And so mm-hmm. we're taking it on head on like, OK, this is a free free webinar because parents need to get this information even yeah. before investing in, in any other learning and that kind of thing. So Black Parents on Top is is another. Um, T-O-P-P dot com. Thank you. I'm glad you said that. Black Parents on Top, T-O-P-P standing for tapping our parental power. Oh, the mm-hmm. acronyms. I love them. I love them. I, love them. I, love them. I be thinking. I be thinking. <laughs> you own it. You own it. You own it. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies, again, this has been a pleasure. Uh, I look forward to touching back in with you. Typically, uh, we do a check in within about a year just to see, you know, what's changed, what has grown, you know, what, what, you know, what have life brought you guys. So I look forward to tapping in with you guys again to see how far you guys have come. Oh, so do we. I'm happy to know that. Yes, ma'am. I yes, look ma'am. forward to it. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, with that being said, this has been Sir of the 2020 Podcast LLC. Please say the LLC. Uh, Bolan Lay and Falami of You and I Rise. And we are out. Thank Bless. you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> hey, this is Mystique. This is Mr. Everlasting. And this is the safe word. Safe word. Y'all make sure y'all join us every first and third Friday of the month. Every month. We are in season three. Season three. Y'all already know what it is, man. Tap in.